Solid jab. Step in and give him a... Many heavyweights don't utilize this effectively. Give him a good jab, good stiff jab. Really good. Two heavyweights really battling. You know, at 33 years old, Sullivan has to make something happen now for his career. Yeah, this is it. Yes. I saw him on the way up, as you did, Sean, on many occasions. You know, I really thought he was going to get further than he did. I uh, I was impressed with him in his early the early portion of his career. When, when he fought Buster Mathis Jr., I thought he fought a great fight against Buster Mathis Jr., one that was, he wasn't allowed to get the victory in because it ended within the four rounds, and so it was a technical draw after there had been a foul. But uh, I thought after that fight, man, this guy's really got something. But, you know, he... When he came up against the top guys, he just couldn't get over. That fight with Mathis back in April of 1996. The man has been around a long time. I mean, 46 fights for him. 39-7-2 with 28 KOs. And there was a point there that you really thought he could make something out of this. But unfortunately for Obed, he always had some kind of reasoning that it didn't happen for him. He didn't train properly. You know, he was in there with Haseem Rockman in a, in a fight that he just kind of coasted in instead of really going after Haseem, but I think he was fearful he'd be knocked out, as anybody would be. Another effective round by Okendo. Ah! Number three, and Okendo, uh, I believe, has really dictated the fight through the first two rounds. Sullivan tried to pick it up in that last round, had some success, but Okendo probably with that jab still, uh, would I would think, took the round on the judges' scorecards. Remember, this is for the NABF championship, and uh, normally that's considered a stepping stone title. Sometimes it means absolutely nothing, but in this case, this is a real step into the heavyweight elite. Well, Oquendo now is ranked already seventh by two of the sanctioning organizations, so he's getting into that elite class. Which, oh, he took a hot right there, Barry, from Sullivan. Right to the top of the head. Now he's going to have to get some life back in his legs. He tries to fight back. Best punch of the fight by Sullivan by far. Remember, we've seen Oquendo down on a couple of occasions against Dale Crow, against Ramon Garbet, and he got up and he fought well. I mean, he, you have to learn how a fighter's going to react to getting hit. You're going to get hit in there, especially in these heavyweight fights. Let's see if it's not a confidence builder for Obed Sullivan, though. Oquendo still trying to work behind the jab. Obed's really pushing it, though. He's pushing the issue. He's coming fast at Oquendo. Yeah, Oquindo. he is. He is. Trying to cut the ring on him. This reminds me, in a way, of Chris Bird's fight with David Tua and that Oquendo cannot relax for even an instant uh, in there. He's got to have intense concentration uh, at all times, as Bird did against, you know, against Tua, because in each case, you know that you know if you relax, let up, and uh, get lax defensively, it could spell doom for you. Oh, big right hand from Okendo. That time, though, Sullivan did not take a backward step. That overhand right, clearly the weapon for Okendo. Incidentally, you might have heard Bob Barrow, the ring announcer, introduce him as Okendo, and you and I were speaking with him today, and he referred to himself as Okendo, so right. we're trying to go with that. Again, that jab. And now there's a real swelling under the right eye of old Ben Sullivan. And that, uh, as we go on, could prove to be a problem. All caused by that jab. A little bit of a, a welt and a little bit of blood under the right eye of Sullivan. And Obed doesn't move that head much of his, so he's got to bury either. You know, since he's not trying to slip the jab, he's got to get somehow inside of it or just knock it down at least. And he's having trouble knocking down it. Knocking it down because he doesn't react to it quickly. It's so quick. This is another very effective round, I believe, for Fred Zaquendo. Got a low blow in return <laughs> and backed off. Momentary uh, delay before the start of round number four because there was some water in Sullivan's corner. Now we're underway. Sullivan had his movement in that last round, but uh, I believe Oquendo won the round. It's a good jab by Sullivan. Every now and then he's able to 
to jab with Frez, but not enough. In front of Sullivan's trunks are ripped also. This could get uh, embarrassing. Let's go into the corner of Obed Sullivan. Sean O'Grady's there, Sean. I'm over here with Steve Ministeri. Steve, the first couple of rounds were awfully tough for Obed. How did he weather the storm, and he's coming back? Well, we knew to start with it would be very hard to take his jab away in the early part of the fight when he's fresh. So we told Obed, don't worry if you lose the first two or three rounds. The key is to put pressure, and that eventually will take the jab away. The key to this fight is taking away Aquenda's jab. If he does it, he wins. If he doesn't, he won't. Yeah, but that's a problem, too, for, for Obed because his eyes are swelling up. Can you keep that swelling down? Yeah, he's used to fighting with a lot of scar tissue, and we have Curtis Coates in the corner that kept Kirk Johnson in the fight with Larry Donald when his eye was shut. So Obed's a warrior. He'll hang in there. But you notice Aquendo's already getting a little bit slower, and, and Ben's beginning to get inside. Any change, Steve? I'm sorry? Any change? Change? Change of tempo, change of uh, strategy? No, I think the key is just to, to emphasize that you have to counter jab when he jabs, and you have to get inside and start working the body. But I'm already noticing Aquendo's beginning to slow down. And remember, Aquendo's never gone 12 rounds, and Ben's been there seven times. Very astute. Steve Minister, he likes what he sees. More of the same from him. Back to you. A little bit of a better round, I think, for Sullivan also. Yeah, it has been, uh, Barry. And I think all, all of what Steve said was basically was quite valid. But, you know, except for the fact that uh, you don't want those eyes to get too bad as a result of those uh, jabs. But Curtis Coates in this corner. Uh, there was a guy who was a warrior in his day as well. Oh, tremendous welterweight. Right hand from Oquendo. Sullivan is answering back, though. It, what he's doing is trying to, to counter Barry. He got hit that shot by Oquendo, but he, he came back with a hard one of his own. One thing about each of these rounds is that Sullivan seems to have his success in the early portion of the round, and uh, Oquendo does much better in the last minute, which uh, the judges tend to remember a little bit more. And again, the jab of Fraser Oquendo. I think you're absolutely right. It's very hard to score these rounds just because of that. Well, the Sunday Night Fights come your way each and every Sunday at 6. Watch the guys who make both today's and tomorrow's headlines on the Sunday Night Fights every Sunday at 6. Round 5. And this has been uh, pretty much as advertised so far. Interesting fight, Barry, between the two. El Cuendo, very good jab. Sullivan, as expected. Pushing the issue, pressing forward, trying to wear down Oquendo, trying to make him physically wear down by having the mental prospect of having a guy in your face the whole time. Well, and he's not being as consistent, that is Oquendo, with that jab. There's a left hook that caught Sullivan up behind the ears. Fresno Quendo runs a lot. He and the uh, team Trinidad run long distances, and I suspect that he's going to have good stamina if this fight does go a good uh, distance of ground. Like he says, they run a lot of 10K, 15K distances. And that gives you the confidence, too, to fight at a quicker pace in the early going. Well, Sean O'Grady has now made his way from the corner of Obed Sullivan into the corner of Fraser Quindo, and uh, let's find out what's going on there, Sean. Guys, I got Fraser Quindo Sr. over here, and he is very proud of his son's uh, action tonight. What are, you, what are you trying to do in this corner? Work hard with my son, you know. My son is, is, is one of the best right now, you know. You see now, he, he always has the gap. I'm moving, I'm moving. He's the gap moving. The time is coming when he, 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 he throws the punch. Do you think he will, at some point in this fight, he wanted a knockout tonight. Yeah. Do, you, do you think he's going to go for that? Yeah, he go for that when? soon. When? Soon. I, I, I don't know when, but soon. You think the time is just about there, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe cook, it, cook a couple more rounds? Yeah, a couple more tough, rounds. Tough fight. Has Fred been hurt? No, no, no. You're doing a lot of bobbing and weaving over here. No, no. Well, I know my son how about it. Right. Dad's very nervous over here. I can tell you right now. All right, back over to you. All right, thanks. I think Frez is doing a nice job in this round, Barry. He's controlling the action. Sullivan has not been able to, 
to plant good solid punches on him in this round. No, I like what he's doing too, uh, and we mentioned this earlier, is he's kind of taking a different tactic with every round. You know, how he moves, what kinds of punches he throws. This time not as many jabs, but kind of moving one way, then coming back the other way, throwing a few more hooks in this round. I think this round really is more about what Sullivan did not do than what Aquendo did. We'll be back. Shoulder him off again, keep him at long distance, pop him with the right. Nice work by Aquendo. Yeah, and it's all those little things that, that are learned in the gym. Crowder and Choctaw really into this fight. Tone was set by our first fight, a women's fight, Olga Oblasova. Oquendo not nearly as awkward as he was early in his career. There was some advantage to being that awkward, but you know, I think one thing that Fresno.